What's up guys, welcome to day 19 of the 100 days run streak challenge and today we're gonna discuss about my first ever marathon and how I run it completely alone. I mean to be fair I wasn't entirely alone but stay tuned to know more. I started training for my first marathon at the very end of December 2019. I was already registered for Paris Marathon, which was in April 2020, and I had already planned my 14 weeks training. The marathon was the first week of April, but of course that was 2020 and everybody know what happened during this year. So anyway, three weeks before, when I was training for my week 11, it got cancelled, and after I had done 11 weeks of hard training and waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning to get those one hour, two hour run. I wasn't gonna let it go and just push it back to the next year. I wanted to become a marathoner no matter what. Then as I'm living in the UK, there was the Brighton Marathon that was just two weeks after when Paris was supposed to happen. And funny enough, Brighton Marathon opened new entries for people who got canceled in Paris or Rome. So I thought, okay, cool. I'm gonna extend my training for two weeks. I'll do a 16 weeks preparation now instead of only 14 and I'll I'll run my first marathon at Brighton but again two weeks later Brighton got cancelled too and at this point it was basically when the whole planet was shutting down and there was absolutely no alternative than running this marathon on my own but nevertheless I had done 16 weeks of hard training it was the first time for me it was this time in my life that I had completed the most running ever biggest mileage the biggest compromise and hard training so i wasn't gonna let it go anyway so i decided to run this marathon on my own in the city that i live in and overall i learned a lot about this experience and i'm extremely happy that it happened obviously if you would have asked me i would have preferred living this first experience in paris but overall but but overall I'm really happy to be a marathoner now and in case you're wondering about running those virtual race or some races on your own I wanted to pass a little bit of what I learned and how I managed to make this happen because I think that even if you could be disappointed because this race that you really wanted to do is cancelled I think it's better to run it no matter what get this fulfillment feeling and the big sense of achievement that those races represent so let's dive in now on how to run this race alone. The first idea I would say is that you gotta try to use this to your advantage. It's gonna be on your own, so there's gonna be no cheering crowd, aid station, uh, no race atmosphere that would basically make you run faster. But there are other advantages due to the fact that this race is on your own. First, you can choose the route, you can choose the time where you're going to run, and you can choose exactly what you're able to eat and where the aid station are, so to say. So you gotta use those to your advantage. You know, you're losing on one side, but you can win on others, so why not take those other perks that running on your own give you? First, you have to define your route. For me personally, I took a route that I was doing before. I took a 16K route, so around 10 miles, basically, and this route could be easily shortened to 6 miles if I wanted to. So I decided to do two full loop of 10, so 10 and 10 again, and then only 6 to complete the 26 miles that the marathon is. I choose those routes because I knew them very well, and that is also something that you can use to your advantage in a marathon. Although you would know every kilometer or every mile, you still don't know all the atmosphere, you don't know if it's gonna go uphill or downhill at some point. You might have studied the race a little bit, but it's never as good as knowing it by experience. So in this case, I took a route that I knew I had already done this 30, 40, 50 times maybe. So I had a lot of visual milestone that I knew I wanted to hit at what time, etc. So I was very familiar with the environment. So that's your first step, define your route. Then define your time. I personally think that sometime race could be very early in the morning, like some marathons start 7 a.m., 8 a.m., which could be a nightmare in terms of nutrition. Because, because if you want to be efficient, you, you need to eat quite a lot but have the time to digest all of that. So that means probably eating a very healthy and dense breakfast, but at least three hours before the beginning of the race. But if the race is at 7 a.m., that means waking up at 3.30, eating at four, it could be harder. So if you are controlling the timing now, do as I did. I woke up at eight, had my breakfast until nine, and then took three hours and departed at 12, where I was fully digested. I had my body full of 
glycogen, energy, I was ready to go. Then, and I know I said that I ran this on my own, I do think that it would be tremendously easier if you could get some support. At least support from someone that can bring you either food or water. In terms of water, I decided to do it completely self-sufficient in terms of water and food. So I had everything on my backpack, I had a two liter bladder and I had gels also. But nevertheless, every time I was looping around, so those three loops, Margot was always waiting for me and I could ask her if I wanted something else, if I wanted to have a different shirt maybe, something better for the cold, something better for the warm, in case the weather changed. It was a big security basically, I wasn't on my own for those 42k or 26 miles. Even better, Margot actually decided to run with me for the last 10k. So I ran the two first loop of 16k, 16k and then for the last 10 one she just came along and finished the marathon with me. Plus, on top of that, Margot also arranged secretly that some friends would prepare some motivation boards and as I was passing in front of their house they basically went out and they act as the cheering crew basically which was extremely nice and it gave me a tons of motivation to keep running on my own that was a really nice gesture and although you don't need that if you can get those support from some friends, it would definitely help a lot. Alternatively, I also suggest that you do exactly like you do on your run, so have good music on. I would even encourage you to do audiobooks. If you haven't seen the video that I did on audiobooks and why I think they are so great for runners, I'll put the link up there, so have a look. That's it guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you have already run a race like this on your own, go ahead and drop a comment. And if you have any tips for other people, feel free to leave them as well. Now, quick update on the run streak. Today, as I said, it's day 19. I ran slightly more as I was running with a friend. We went into some cross-country trails. So we ended up running more like 12. That was really good anyway, because sun was there, it was absolutely beautiful. It was a great run. Also, this was my weight this morning. As I mentioned in yesterday's video, yesterday was cheat meal day, so I was expecting my weight to go up a little bit, which it did, that's perfectly normal. Now I'm gonna go to a more strict diet for the next five, six, seven days before my next cheat meal basically, and I'm hoping to go below the 80 kilogram mark in four or five days. For now, everything is pretty much following the plan. Running is good, I do feel some pain in the legs, but I try to massage them, massage gun them also a lot. And on the weight loss side, I think I'm following this pretty steady curve now going down. So everything tends to indicate that, that I should be able to achieve the initial goals. Stay tuned.